Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to So You Want to Become a Warrior. Warrior can be unlocked at level 30 after becoming a Marauder in Limsa Lamensa in the Marauder's Guild. So Marauder is your basic axe-wielding maniac with the power to go berserk and destroy everything that is in its path. Now, Warriors work a little bit different than Paladins and Dark Knights. Their defensive capabilities mostly work against physical attacks and not much for magic attacks. Because of that, warriors have a little bit of a different effect when they go into their stances. They have two stances actually. Defiance, which increases their maximum HP by 25% while reducing damage dealt by 20% and increases enmity. Increases own HP recovery via healing magic by 20%. Warriors are the only ones that have that stipulation to them because the fact that their defensive capabilities is limited. They cannot block magic attacks with their defensive cooldowns, so they compensate it by having healers do 20% more healing on them. Their second uh, stance is Deliverance. Increases damage dealt by 5%. An effect ends upon reuse. Delivers um, using certain actions while under the effect of deliverance will add to your beast gauge, increasing critical hit rate by 10%. For defiance, it is parry rate by 10%. The beast gauge returns to zero when delivers and deliverance ends. The same with defiance. It cannot be used with defiance. Ensure the recast time with defiance. So basically, you have to wait. At least 10 seconds if you want to stance dance, as they like to call it. If you are switching between Defiance and Deliverance, your Beast Gauge will not reduce to zero. It used to do that, but then they changed it to now when you stance dance, you don't lose Beast Gauge. Warriors have two different combos, your Aggro Combo and your DPS Combo. For your Aggro Combo, you have Heavy Swing, Skull Sunder, and Butcher's Block. Heavy Swing delivers an attack with a potency of 160. Skull Sunder delivers an attack with a potency of 100. Additional effect, increased enmity. Combos off a Heavy Swing and has a combat potency of 210 and increases your Beast Gauge by 10. And the last one is Butcher's Block. Delivers an attack with a potency of 100. Additional effect, increases enmity. Combo action is Skull Sunder. Combo potency is 300 and increases your Beast Gauge by 10 as well. And it looks something like this. And as you can see, my Beast Gauge has increased by 20 because of Skull Sunder and Butcher's Block. With their DPS combo, it goes off of Heavy Swing and into Maim. Maim delivers an attack with potency of 100. Combo action is Heavy Swing, potency of 200. And reduces target slashing resistance by 10% for 24 seconds and increases your Beast Gauge by 10 if you're in Defiance and Deliverance. This used to increase your damage dealt by 10% but that was switched with the Storm's Eye ability, uh, attack which is later on in the combo. So after Maim you actually have Storm's Eye and Storm's Path. So Storm's Path delivers an attack with a potency of 100, combo action Maim, a combo potency of 280, and the combo bonus absorbs a portion of HP dealt as damage dealt as HP. This also used to have the ability to reduce uh, targets damage by 10% but that was taken out and increases beach gauge by 20 and storms I delivers an attack with potency of 100 combo actions maim combo potency is 280 increases damage dealt by 10% for 30 seconds and it gives you 10 beast gauge like I said this used to be swapped with maim but because they would probably th thought you have to go through all this just to add in the damage debuff where you can just use maim and then just go into storm's path so this way you only have to do storm's eye every time your buff wears off so, so you can just spam storm's eye instead of um, storm's path instead of eye and it looks something like this so it's storm's eye and storm's path 
And there's your HP recovery on the left. So basically those are your combos for Warrior. So let's look, uh, let's look at some other abilities that they have. Starting with Overpower. This is basically Warrior's equivalent to Unleash and Flash. This does a Conal Attack. And it has a pretty good range to it. And it's a TP cost of 120, so you don't want to spam it a lot. So it delivers an attack with opponents of 130 to all enemies in the cone before you, and does increase enmity. Now the problem with Overpower is, is the fact that it does a cone before you. With Dark Knights and Paladins, you have a full 360 AoE. And it's because all Warriors lost Flash, thanks to the cross roll action, you basically have to rely on Overpower in order to do your crowd control. But it can get pretty pricey. The next is your distance attack, which is Tomahawk. Again, it has a TP cost of 120, so you don't want to spam it a lot. It's basically when you're doing pulls. It delivers an a range attack with opponents of 140 and does increased enmity. And that's what it looks like. So now we're going to go into the at attacks that are used with the Beast Gauge. And that is Steel Cyclone, Inner Beast, Upheaval, Onslaught, Bell Cleave, and Decimate. So, in Defiance, you'll have Steel Cyclone and Inner Beast. So let's go with Inner Beast first. Delivers an attack with potency of 250, ignores the damage penalty inflicted by Defiance. So basically the 20% damage reduction. Goodbye. Inner Beast cancels that out. Absorbs a portion of damage dealt as HP. An additional effect reduces damage taken by 20% for 6 seconds, and it costs 50 Beast Gauge. Still Cyclone is the basic the 360 AoE that I was talking about. Delivers an attack for potency of 200 to all nearby enemies, ignores the damage penalty inflicted by Defiance, can only be executed while under the effect of Defiance. Additional effect absorbs a portion of HP, damage dealt as HP, Increases enemy and costs 50 beast, uh, beast Gauge. So the more enemies around you, the more HP you will gain back. An action changes the Decimate under the effect of Deliverance. And Inner Beast changes to Fell Cleave while in Deliverance. So, Fell Cleave, your most hard-hitting ability. Delivers an attack with a with opponents of 520, this was reduced actually, can only be executed while they under the effect of Deliverance, it costs 50 Beast Gauge, and Decimate, delivers an attack to all nearby enemies with opponents of 280, can only be executed under the effect of Deliverance, and it costs 50 Beast Gauge, and it changes to Steel Cyclone while you're in your def Defiance. Next is Onslaught and Upheaval. Onslaught rushes attack and delivers and attack with potency of 100. So basically it's your gap closer for Warrior. Increases enmity and costs 20 Beast Gauge. Can be executed in either stance and cannot be used while bound. And Upheaval. Delivers one attack with potency of 300. Potency decreases at own HP decreases. So basically it is your spirits within for Warriors. Potency also affected by maximum HP increasing effects granted to self. Such as Defiance and Thrill of Battle, which we'll get into later. Cost 20 Beast Cage can only be executed on the effect of Defiance or Deliverance, so it doesn't matter what stance you're under, you can use it. So, while I'm in Defiance, here is Steel Cyclone. Let's see the HP recovery. Let me get some Beast Cage back. And here's Inner Beast. So pretty cool. So let's go into Deliverance. Gain some Beast Gauge again. Let's get up to 100. Alright, here's Fell Cleave. Here's Decimate. Pretty hard. <laughs> Here's upheaval. Basically, it punches in the face. 
which is pretty cool. And here's Onslaught. So basically your shoulder tackle for warriors. So now let's go into your defensive uh, capabilities as a warrior. So basically you have Vengeance, Raw Intuition, but Raw Intuition kind of works differently, unlike Rampart and Vengeance. Vengeance reduces damage taken by 30% and delivers an attack with points of 55 every time you suffer physical damage. Physical damage, not magical. That's the difference between, that's the difference with Warrior. It does not have magical defenses, which is kind of pointless, but... And it lasts for 15 seconds. It says recast hammer of 120. Raw intuition parries all physical attacks. Again, physical taken from the front. All attacks taken from the flank or the rear will result in critical damage for 20 seconds. This will pair as well with awareness, which I'll get a little bit later. So those are your basic, two basic damage reducing attacks. This is from the front. This is from all sides, but it's only for physical. Thrill of Battle increases maximum HP by 20% and restores the amount increased. So basically, there's Thrill of Battle and gives you me 11,482 extra HP. And that will work well with Upheaval. So that pretty much, you always want to have Thrill of Battle up when you're using Upheaval. And it has 120 second recast time and it only lasts for 20 seconds and your HP will go back down to what it previously was with Defiance. So keep that in mind. Home Gang. This is basically the Living Dead or home um, Hollow Ground for Paladins and Dark Knights. Draws target towards Caster and binds both of you so you cannot move and for six seconds. Most attacks cannot reduce your HP to less than one. Insta kills will automatically cancel out home gang. I use this pretty well during the extreme titan fights back in the Realm Reborn when we did the one tank strat. This thing saved my butt a lot of times. This, you want to make sure you have HP when you're under this because if this wears off and you don't have enough HP to get the next attack you can get wiped out even though you're using it as last resort and it has a recast time of 180 seconds Unchained nullifies the damage penalty inflicted by Defiance for 20 seconds it can only be executed while under the effect of Defiance so switch to it Unchained and now all your attacks will do the maximum damage for about 16, uh, 20 seconds. And this is home gang. The chain, you can't move, you're bound in place no matter how many times I move around until it wears off. So that's home gang. You I mean you can spin around in circles like an idiot, but you can't move. <laughs> Next is Infuriate. Increases beast gauge by 50 when Defiance or Deliverance is active, and it can only be activated during combat, so you can't pre-do it yourself for a fight. Equilibrium. It has two different effects. It restores own HP when used in Defiance, cure up to 1200, or 200 TP rege regeneration when you're in Deliverance. It's the only tank that can cure its own TP. Next, you have Shake It Off. Now, this had a pathetically stupid effect before it was changed. I think it would... I think it would shake off any debilitating debuffs like Sleep, Heavy, Slow, and stuff like that. I believe that's what it did. It had no use in this game because a lot of times what causes most of those status effects really so it had a revamp which now creates a barrier around self and all nearby party members that absorbs damage totaling eight percent of maximum hp dispels thrill of battle inner beast vengeance and raw intuition and increases damage absorbed by four percent for each effect removed for 15 seconds so you have a 24 
percent damage absorption shield. I mean, if you use it with all, all with all those abilities. If you're off tank, you have no reason not to dispel all these. But if you're main tank, you probably you don't really need Thriller Bell or Raw Intuition or Inner Beast if you're doing boss fights, because basically the boss fight would be pretty much attacking you from the front anyway. And Inner Release, which also kind of had its effect changed a little bit. Allows the use of Beast Gauge actions without cost of the Beast Gauge. And nullifies Stun, Sleep, Bind, Heavy, and most Knockback and Draw and Effects. Guarantees that all attacks are critical and direct hits. That is right. That 500 and something potency fell cleave will do direct and crit hits while Inner Release is up. And with Inner Beast, that also does maximum HP recovery. So you can pretty much heal yourself to full with Inner Beast. For 10 seconds. And can only be executed on, under the effect of Defines and Deliverance. Its old effect was it, it would cut the Beast Gauge cost of Fell Cleave, Decimate, Inner Beast and Cyclone by half. So pretty much 25 for every time. So I believe that is pretty much everything in... Oh, and Berserk. I forgot to mention that. Guar grant, um, guarantees that all attacks are critical and direct hits. This will be replaced by inner release upon hitting level 70. They actually removed Berserk at level 70. Unfortunately. And that's for 10 seconds. Let's go into traits. Basic vitality enhancement. Enhanced Infuriate. Reduces Infuriate cost by 5 seconds upon a landing inner beast, Sil Cyclone, Fell Cleave, or Decimate on most targets. The, on the most targets part doesn't really make sense because I think it does it in all targets so regardless. So I don't know why they add that on, on to it. But that means when you are doing your inner release and doing your Decimate and all that, you basically will be cutting in the recast time of Infuriate by 5 seconds each time and it has a recast time of 60 seconds so if you can get out 4 to 5 fell cleaves or 4 to 5 decimates or inner, inner beasts you can decrease this by 5, 10, 15, 20 about 25 seconds so it it's pretty damn useful so you pretty much always want to kind of like want to have enhance, uh, infuriate on cooldown most of the time and Berserk Mastery, which did basically upgrades the Berserk to end of release. So Berserk no longer is available after 70. So basically, you say bye-bye to Berserk from Stormblood on, unfortunately. But if you do level sync below 70, Berserk will replace end of release. So don't worry about that. Now the roll actions. You want to take Rampart because it reduces all damage by 20%. So it's a guarantee to take. And of course, Convalescence increases its own HP recovery, healing, healing magic by 20%, so these two are a must. And Awareness, if you plan on using Raw Intuition in Dungeon, you want to use Awareness, which nullifies critical damage. Shirk, the divert 25% of enemy to target member, perfect for tank swaps. Low Blow, pretty much want to take this during dungeon runs if you are going to be doing a lot of stunning. I believe they lost their stun ability. Yeah. So if you have no stun ability, low blow is your choice. Anticipation. You don't really need this because Paladin um, Dark Warriors don't really need to parry much. Interject. It's a silence. Not too many things need to be silenced. Except for like maybe one mob. Provoke. You can easily take ultimatum if you like. But Provoke is a 40 second recast time. Basically, just makes you the top of the aggro list. Reprisal lowers targets damage dealt by 10%. Basically, you can take that if you want. So, that's these pretty much three are a take. And this one's a take, so it's four. So, you can either choose Reprisal or Shirk. That depends if you're doing Savage content, Ultimate content, whatever. Shirk is probably more better than Reprisal. So, pretty much those are the ones that you want to take. But again, they are completely up to you. Alright, so let me demonstrate some of the animations for some of these abilities. So you have Vengeance. Raw Intuition. Equilibrium. Shake it off. This actually looks pretty damn cool. 
I'm going to show you. I'm going to go ahead and dispel my beast cage real quick sec. Alright. So basically, Infuriate and Inner Release kind of go hand in hand. So, Infuriate, Inner Release, and this is what you can do with Inner, inner Release. So you can do basically crit and direct hit attacks with inner beast up and as you can see my infuriate which was on a 60 second cooldown is now down to 20 seconds so that's how fast infuriate can be off the cooldown when inner release is with it now people have complained that warrior is too simplistic but as long as you have fun with the job why does it matter if it's difficult to play or it's easy to play as long as you have fun that's all that matters so guys that is pretty much it for this video thank you so much for watching don't forget to leave a like on this video if you found this useful any comments questions concerns you have about warrior please leave them in the comment section down below i'd be more than happy to help you guys with any questions that you might have and of course don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you're new for more final fantasy 14 stoneblood content so until next time, guys, may you forever walk in the light of Lord Bahamut. Take care, guys.